We don't endure to the end. We don't persevere to the end, and therefore we're saved forever because we finally endure and make it. No, we we don't persevere. We are preserved. Now, some of you look like you've been pickled, but you're really preserved. Why don't we use Bible terminology rather than John Calvin's terminology? Wouldn't that be better? I don't believe in the perseverance of the saints. I believe in the preservation of the saints. They're signed, sealed, and will be delivered. Say forever. Yeah. I didn't mean to get that in. That just came in. I told you it's a new sermon. I'm making it up as I go. The new, I'm going to make some notes on it myself, so give me time. But you go home and read your Baptist doctrinal statement. It'll say, we believe in salvation by grace through faith. That's what it says. And yet, we think if we don't make it real hard for people to get saved, they're not really saved. And we'll make it real, real hard for them to get saved. Then they really, really are saved then. That's about as dumb as anything I've ever heard in my life. I don't know the difference between being saved and really saved. I never have figured the difference out. That's like going to the funeral home and saying, that and that casket is dead over there. He's dead. Just dead, that's all. But glory to God, this one over here, he's really dead. He's really dead. He's and this one over here, he has an old-fashioned sky-blue heaven dose of death. Glory to God, maggots working in his eyeballs. Hallelujah. He's got it. Now, they all fear in the same shape. They're just dead. My old preacher kept me as confused as a termite in a yo-yo trying to preach the gospel to me. Somebody gets saved in the church and whoo, and shout them down out. he say, boy, he's really saved. He, he really got a dose of old time. Glory to God. He's got it. And, he had, and everybody shouting. And as a little boy, I thought, well... I didn't get it. And I, I didn't get really saved because I didn't run them down the aisle and shout like that guy did, so I'm not really saved. But I learned after 21 years passing the same church, you can't tell my how much gas in the tank with the honk of the horn. I know a lot of Baptists still blowing their horn, been out of gas for years and years and years. We've confused a sign of salvation so the average person, if they want to be saved, don't know how to be saved. Now, don't get mad at me. Because this one point's going to take a whole sermon here. Yeah. Saved, really saved. No, you're just saved. And the moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved, or Acts 16, 31 is a lie. You say, what if I didn't feel like it? I, a lot of days I don't feel like it. Some days it's noon before I begin to feel like I'm saved. But feelings go and feelings come and feelings are deceiving. My warrant is the Word of God and all else is worth believing. So I'll trust in God's unchanging word till soul and body sever. For though all earth should pass away, his word abides forever. See? I feel good, but I don't know I'm saved because I feel good. I know I'm saved because the Bible says so, and I feel good because I know I'm saved. Don't you see that? I preached in churches and, pe- and told people how to get saved. And ask if you'll trust the Lord, come shake the preacher's hand. They come down the aisle and trust the Lord and tell the preacher, I'm trusting Jesus. And then somebody take them off of you and talk them out of it. And bring back a card, wrote rededication on the card. I get so nervous, I don't know what to do. And you say, well, what about all these false professions? What about them? Where are they? I don't know any. You're getting awful quiet here tonight. If you come to me and told me my profession is false, I'd slap your jaws in Christian love. I know I wasn't lying to God when I told him I was trusting him. Why should I call a man who walks down an aisle a lie when he tells me he's trusting Jesus? I say, you lying about it? Is this false? That's about the dumbest thing I heard of in a long time, man. Talk to him. What about all those little kids? What about them? If they trust Jesus, they're saved. Well, where are all of them? Well, where are the 100,000 members in Acts chapter 6 when you get to Acts chapter 12? They're scattered abroad. They're everywhere. That's where they are. I got them scattered all over the world. Got some in jail. Don't look surprised. You have two. You got some in jail. Not all of them are good. You're getting quiet on me. I'm going to have a good time. Are you doing not? I'm probably going to hit you in a minute, so don't get too mad. They say if you don't make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you're not saved. You didn't get that in the Bible. You're getting quiet now, aren't you? Yeah. Was he Lord of David's life when he committed adultery with Bathsheba? No, he wasn't. Was David saved? Yeah, man, off to God's own heart. Come on. The guys who tell you to quit your sinning and God will save you hadn't quit their sinning yet. How many of you quit your sinning? You never have sinned since you've been saved. Raise your hand. I want to see the pen feathers on your back. If you hadn't sinned since you've been saved, raise your hand if you're in here. I want to see you, dirty liar, you. 
cure your sins that you've been saved. Come on. How many think you might have sinned today sometime? Raise your hand real high and let's see how many sinners we got here. Yeah, I got a bunch of them. How many told a lie since you've been saved? Raise your hand. Don't lie about it again. Come on, get them up, all you liars. Keep them up. Keep them up. You've lied since you've been saved. Raise your hand. You know what you are? You're a liar. Keep your hand up. Keep it up, all you liars. And look around because those that don't have their hands up, biggest liars in the whole state of Texas. If getting saved is getting on your knees and promising Jesus you'll never sin again, I wouldn't get saved because I wouldn't lie about it. I'll promise I'll do the best I can, but my best ain't going to be good enough. If my best was good enough, he didn't need to go to Calvary 2,000 years ago and die for my sin. Don't leave me now. If confessing Jesus as Lord makes a man saved, then you've got to preach universal salvation. Because Jesus is coming back someday, and the Bible said every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Then you've got universal salvation. You're getting awful quiet in here, don't you believe the Bible? Why don't you just take it like it is? Salvation wasn't by grace and a gift. Nobody go to heaven. But we change a sign, and you know, and we apologize about preaching like this because we're afraid we're going to offend somebody who thinks you must keep the Ten Commandments to get saved. You're getting quiet. And up where I live, the Camelites, God bless you, you got them down here too, and you need a blessing with them folks around. They preach a lie and sing the truth. I never heard anything like them. Up there where you are, they got a class called Amazing Grace Bible. Class is the most, biggest myth no one ever heard in my life. I watched them on television the other day. They were singing, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, I screamed, You lying devil. What do you mean? You're singing, Your hope's built on nothing less than time they don't get baptized, they're not saved. Your hope's built on the baptistry. If that water washed your sins away, I wouldn't let you baptize me up there. Not after you baptized about 20 others in front of me, I'd come out and worse shape and went in in. Come out more sin on my head when I went in the place. I wouldn't even want the preacher to baptize me lest his sins get washed off in there with him. I'd want the baptistry sterilized and boiled and perfumed before I went in it. If they believe the water washed their sins away, they'd quit building churches and get a water hose. Come on, man. They ought to sing that song the sons of the pioneers sang. Water, water, keep a moving Dan. Don't you listen to him, Dan. He's a devil, not a man. And he treads the burning sand with water, water, water. That's what they ought to sing instead of amazing grace. Woo! Ain't we having a good time here? But everybody comes along and changes the sign on salvation. Why don't we leave it like it says? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. Why don't we leave it like that? When a man says, I do, I wonder if he's really married. When he says, I do, if I'm performing the ceremony, it's done. And I don't say, did you really mean it? Are you sincere? Is this a false profession you're making here? Or have I picked you green? Come on. I, if he says, I do, I said, it's done. Go get out of here now. Did they live it? I don't know anybody ever got married and lived it. My wife sitting back there, she'll tell you I don't live it. So I'm going to tell you, oh, she does. And I'm going to tell her she don't live it either. I never have known anybody live it. Everybody expected more of his wife than he got. And that was awful quiet because your wife's sitting next to you, you dirty coward. But don't get mad because uh, every husband, wife well, expects more of her husband than you ever got to. Somebody said, was it a happy marriage? I said, oh, yeah, the marriage is very happy. It's the living together that's tough. Easy to get married hard to live the married life. Do your wife, your wife have a fuss? I words fly so fast they don't have time to get crossed up. I never have, I never have wanted to divorce her, but I wanted to kill her three or four times. And tried to punt her 40 yards one time, but she wouldn't go. Only kidding, I got better sense than that. I'm, j- I'm making a point. I'm exaggerating to make a point. We don't ever exaggerate. We crowd buckets of tears over our exaggeration. You'll get that by midnight delivery tomorrow. When a man gets married, he says, I do. I never said, you mean that? Are you serious about that? This is a false profession or real. When a sinner comes out of the house and tells me he's trusting Jesus, Savior, I take him at his word and take God at his word and say the guy has everlasting life because God said so and that's settled. He's going to heaven. He may not behave all the time, but he's going to heaven. 